Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is DJ. Oh, and I'm here to tell you a story called Me and Andy Go to WEMP. And if you're not familiar with what WEMP is, it's uh, a festival in Toronto called World Electronic Music Festival. It's a three day rave. I don't remember the 90s. Okay, so me and Andy get in the car and we have someone driving us up to WEMP. And we're driving, we're driving, and we get lost because someone stupidly enough left me in charge of directions. And with the drugs too. So we finally end up at WEMP. And you gotta understand is Andy right now is known as is, is an internationally known DJ, but back then he was just a black rat junkie. He was just spinning, making a name for himself. So we show up to the entrance to WEMP. I got a record bag, he's got a record bag, and we both have hands on this record crate. Right? Security doesn't ask us any questions, they just wave us in because we're late and it's it's dumb. So we finally get like a dri driven right to the DJ booth, right to the stage, we hop right to the back of the stage, and he puts his record crate bag down, I put my record crate bag down. Then I take the record crate, he starts spinning away, I open up the record. Now you gotta remember back then raves were dry. There was no booze at all. So I open up the record crate, instant wet bar. We got your gin, we got vodka, we got rye, we got rum. We're set for the weekend. Because let's face it, three days without booze? Oh, hell no. That ain't gonna happen. So he's spinning away, I'm mixing drinks for all the DJs and everyone else. Mixing away, security comes up. And they're like, DJ, please tell me that's not alcohol. And I'm like, sure, it's not alcohol. <laughs> they bought it. <laughs> she goes, all right, do me a favor, just keep it around the DJ booth backstage, and while you're at it, make me a Ryan Ginger. <laughs> On the way she goes. So basically, we spent the rest of the weekend, hit set, we're driving around, and then we ran out of booze. Oh, you guys in silence, I panicked. So once we're out of booze, what do we get into? We get into the pills. So basically, from here on in, the next three days are blur. And as I come out on Sunday morning, I realized Andy left me there. <laughs> I don't blame him. So I eventually go, you know what, maybe I want to go home. It's Sunday, it's night, I want to go home. So I have to take the shuttle bus back to Toronto. So I hop on the shuttle bus, and all these little kids are looking at me, and then I sit down, and they all just kind of move away from me. And I'm like, Oh, come on, we've been out for three days partying. We all got our freshest. <laughs> so eventually the bus goes down, and we're going down the road. And we're driving, and, the little, and I see, I notice these two little kids in the back of the bus, and they keep, their heads pop down, and then their heads pop back up. And their heads pop down, and their heads pop back up. And we're like, okay, I'm not gonna ask questions. And then we're going down the road, and then the bus driver, you know, starts pulling over and she's like, all right, listen, guys, no smoking on the bus. All right, put it out, throw it out the window. So finally the kid just throws out the cigarette out the window right. and the bus keeps going. Right, 20 minutes down the road. Bus driver starts pulling over. She's like, hey, no smoking weed on the bus unless you're gonna share. <laughs> bus driver got groovy. Started talking to Bob Marley, we're having fun now. All right, half, half hour down the road. Bus driver starts pulling over again. I look at these little kids like, all right, fuckers, I need to get home. <laughs> you don't understand, all right? And uh, so the bus driver goes over the CB. She's like, hey, everyone, don't, don't worry. We're just stopping for a piss break. There's nothing to worry about. The fact that she had said there's nothing to worry about kind of made me want to worry. So she leaves the radio on and goes over the CB and goes, Jim, yeah, I've just lost the brakes. I can't stop the bus. <laughs> panic hits! Holy shit! Like, you think going being on a plane that's going down is panic? No, try being on a bus with a whole bunch of fucking ravers who've done more goddamn narcotics than any DEA officer's ever seen in his fucking life. Okay, those two little kids in the back, that heads popping up and down, yeah, they found religion and want to do the rest of their stash. They're like, oh God, 
I'll be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done. <laughs> eventually, with the grace of God, the bus driver eventually eases the bus over. We all pile and we kiss the ground. We're all like, thank fucking God. We're alive. Right? And you know, we're all hanging around. And I was asking kids, going, so guys, what's, what's the deal with you? Why are you guys all like weird with me? And like, one of the kids goes, are you a cop? <laughs> no. Why? And they're like, because you look old. <laughs> your head, you're thinking, like, there's got to be a shovel on the bus. We're out in the middle of no one. No one's going to miss one of these kids. Right? And I was asking, so why do you think I look old? You know, and I'm like, well, you just look old, and you don't look like you belong. And I'm sitting there thinking, listen, kid, I was popping pills when you were just a dream. What the fuck? <laughs> the only difference between you, ah, you're just one napkin away. We're being existing. Uh, so eventually we finally get home. I get back to Toronto. I have enough time now, because this is when I started comedy, was to run home, grab a shower, still coming down off a lot of fucking ease, run to the comedy club, and go do stage time. Long story short, just say no to drugs while doing comedy. That was my story. Well, you guys enjoy the rest of the day.